let me turn my stuff on and make sure you guys can hear me the way I want you to. Good morning, y'all. So I got some good little tidbits for you guys today. I know that there is a lot of information that you guys don't know about e-commerce. So I want to come and give like a, a beginner's course on what e-commerce is because so many people talk about e-commerce, but um, they don't really give uh, qualifying uh, qualifiers as to what e-commerce is. Like I have an e-commerce store, but uh, welcome to Beyond E-commerce, and here we give you low liability ways to break into e-commerce. And really, we just believe that wherever you are, just go ahead and get started. Um, a lot of people try to save up a couple thousand dollars and do like some t-shirts or whatever type of label that you want to do, but we think that that is a very risky way to enter the market, and there there are ways to analyze the market without jumping head in, which if that's your investment strategy, do what you are doing. But if it's your investment strategy, then I would hope that you're winning right now. <laughs> Cause it's kind of like, why would your investment strategy be um, super risky if you haven't won? You know, it's kind of like, go ahead and pivot. But for those of you that are just starting, just trying to understand how to invest and things of that sort, I wanted to pop on here and give you guys some points. So we started our, our e-commerce company business with a $500 investment. And I've heard several resellers say this and a lot of people don't know how to get started and how to end up having, you know, 20K months in sales and being able to essentially do away with your regular job. So 20K in sales, the aim would be um, at least 20% coming back. And then after, you know, after all of your costs and everything, you should at least have, you know, like $2,000. Um, so that should you know, do away with your regular job. You should be fine by then. You might not be swimming in money, but at least you don't have to report somewhere every day, which is essentially where we are at this point. So I report here. So I have my little iPad. Hopefully it's going to show up well on the screen. I had a little concern about that, but let's see. So the um, we're going to start with the lowest liability model. And that is going to be drop shipping. So drop shipping for us is really uh, is really quick, and you almost I mean you could start with a couple hundred. The issue with drop shipping is because it's abused, and uh, a lot of times it comes from places overseas. You know, you're waiting six weeks for an item and stuff like that, and that's obviously not that's that's not doable. But um, we drop ship and that model is live on um, Walmart. So we drop ship on Walmart. And the best part about this is because the money turns around in like two to four weeks. So, oh my gosh, can you guys see that? So one is drop shipping on Walmart. Um, it has about a two to four week turnaround, and that's really good. So the best part about drop shipping is that you don't have to buy the inventory until somebody buys from you. So uh, drop shipping on Walmart and Shopify works, but that's only because these are younger uh, platforms and uh, they're not as regulated. But with them not being as regulated, you're obviously not going to get as much traffic because people want places that are um, that are vetted and 
you know, not necessarily dealing with a whole bunch of long wait times. And you could always be open and clear about that, but Amazon does not have a friendly drop shipping model. So number one, I'm going to say is drop shipping. So we drop ship on Walmart and Shopify, but drop shipping is not a part of our course that we start people with, um, Let's say that we don't start people out with drop shipping or we don't suggest that you start out with drop shipping because it's so vague. Like there is there is not ways to analyze candle sales across the board on Shopify, right? There is no way to be like, hey, there are 10 candle sites on Shopify in my area or catering to my specific audience. Um, what should I price my items at? Um, what is the typical buying habits, things of that sort? That's not available. And that's also not available on Walmart because Walmart's buying page is a little different than Amazon. So on Amazon, if you're looking for a candle, you can type in a, a specific candle. So let's just say, what is it? White Barn. So if you were to do White Barn's uh, Bath and Body Works candle, if you were to type that in, then there's probably hundreds, if not thousands of um, of people who are selling that candle. But if it's a specific candle, like a specific scent, then it, once you click on that, you are going to see that candle. How about I just show you this because <laughs> I'm like talking about it, but I'm like, eh, I can actually show you guys. Also, so let me pull up Amazon, Amazonia. Hey, girl, she doesn't everything. Um, so let me share my screen. And here we are. We are on Amazon. So if you were to go to Amazon and you are looking for a candle, let's say white barn candle. Candle. Oh, they got the filter by price. That was nice. Okay, so I see these white boring candles, mahogany teak wood. Okay, my girl Champagne Toast is doing her thing. These are a couple of softwares that I use when I'm trying to analyze. But um you guys don't need to see that. This is not this part here is not gonna show up unless you have that software. But um with this white boring matigity mahogany teak wood the difference between amazon and walmart is like if i'm looking for this specific candle and i am let's say i'm a seller i'm a seller and i'm trying to analyze the market and see how well these are selling some of the buying habits um how, you know, how frequently they're being purchased, return customers, anything like that. If I'm trying to do um, that analysis, I can do that on Amazon. And you see it in my software right here. It's telling you, um, depending on, you know, how much you bought it for, it could give you an ROI, the margin. But one of the things that is really important concerning Amazon is that you can see who else is selling that same product? So on this right hand side, you see uh, in stock and then you see like the name of the store, Ultimate Goods. You could click on that. But then if you scroll down, you find compare. And these are other stores that are also selling that. And not only can you see who else is selling it, you kind of see the top and the bottom. So you see how much they are charging at the top, which is $33. And then you see how much they're charging at the bottom, which is $24. But if you are in the market and you are, oh, did not mean to click that. If you're in the market and you are trying to see how well it sells, you know, if it's seasonal or something like that, you know, there are ways to analyze that. There, there. Are, there are softwares that analyze that for you. The softwares have not been fully developed for Walmart because honestly, they're still, it, it's still relatively young. 
they're still getting it together. I know a lot of the retail stores were bought out for fulfillment services. So they are intentionally moving everything online. They are following the trends. They are getting up to what is actually going on. So that is a good thing. But let's flip over to um, Walmart. So if I go to Walmart, Com. and I am looking for a candle let's just go with the same items you know oranges to oranges apples to apples sort of thing now really the I feel like the most confusing part about Walmart's website is that you can't really tell what Walmart is selling and what like other people are selling unless you click like pick up and delivery or something like that. Um, but if you don't want, but if it's something that you want and it's not at your local Walmart and it also cannot be delivered um, by Walmart, then like you have to go with someone else. So as you can see here, Oh, they have a Mandarin Sequid um, version of it for $5. Okay, girl. Uh, I think these are all sold by Walmart. Actually. Let's see, mainstays, mainstays. Oh, they didn't put it on lock. They locked up that first page. Let me see if I could try to find one that is not sold. So by them, these are all mainstays. Wait, do they? Is there a, a Yankee? Let me get this mic closer. Oh, my husband's so tired of these wires. He didn't wrap everything up. Okay, everything. Um. Yeah, I can't even tell because, like, honestly, it's just anybody could be selling these. Let me see what it says for a seller. Oh, the seller is Glade. So those are obviously the proper one. But let me see if I can find one that's, like, resold. It's, like, it... It's not going to be particularly outstanding. Like, it's not going to be super obvious, but these all look like ones that Walmart sells. They've certainly locked down those first couple pages. Well, golly, do I got to go to 10? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. This is a good one. Girl, can you rack a ten? Okay, girl, we got it, we got it, we got it. Okay, Mary's gone crackers. Do what you do, girl. Anyways, she has 26 reviews and um, a sideways candle. But as I was telling you guys earlier, um, sold and shipped by Walmart.com, meaning they've been vetted by Walmart.com. Part of their um, their version of Amazon FBA, and you don't see any other competition down here. The best part of being on Walmart.com, you don't see any other competition down here. My price is six ninety seven, and that's just my price. Of course, the algorithm or the software is going to um, is going to give you like similar options, but aren't all candles similar to that? Unless it's like referring to the long stem, but um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. So, drop shipping is the lowest liability for you to hop into. You don't get to know the market, and you can't develop your business model based on drop shipping though. Let me just tell you that nobody is looking at you as a brand. Nobody's looking at you as somebody they would want to repeat those purchases with. It's just like you I bought this one thing from you. You just happen to have it. 
I move on. So it's going to, it's a lot more expensive to maintain over time because your money is coming in and it's not coming. Your money is just coming in and it's going out essentially. It's not, it's not coming in in a systematic way. If there is a way to say, hey, if I do this, then I can guarantee this many people will come back. But not only will they come back, but they're going to repeat. That will be your next step. So there are ways in drop shipping to have listings. And those listings are usually items that people are normally buying um, within that platform. But like I said, there is there is not an efficient way to look at the entire market and be like, oh, everyone likes this. Let me try and get this or that. There's not an efficient way to do it. And even if you find something, it could just be for that moment. So drop shipping is the cheapest. I would not suggest it because the churn is so much like you have to be on top of it and there's no way to systematically improve that all right number two let's move on to number two I talked about that for a while um let me take this sheer screen off all right so number two is actually going to be the cheapest way to get in is going to be retail arbitrage Ooh, slash I'm a I'm just going to join it with um, I'm just going to join it with online arbitrage. Is that OK with you guys? There is not much of a difference between them. Like you're doing the same thing. One requires you to go in person and the other one just you don't have to go in person. That's really the only difference. I promise, guys. So two, I'm going to say retail slash online arbitrage and I kept on seeing this word because like a lot of people talk about Airbnb arbitrage and things that sort I might just use that pad behind me next time but thanks for rocking with me guess it's all a work in progress but the second one that I'm going to say is low liability is retail arbitrage or online arbitrage because that's how we got started. We got started with retail arbitrage with $500. And I suggest this over drop shipping because Walmart does have systems. I mean, Walmart, Amazon does have systems in place where you can analyze other people's stores and learn how to scale up based on either their niche or, um, or particular items that they have within their store. So if someone has a thousand reviews, it's like one review to every thousand. So you better believe they've sold at least, you know, a hundred thousand items. So you, you're able to look at their school, their store and get a couple of tips from what they're already doing. So um, not only that, but this past Christmas, Amazon actually released, I just got an email about it this morning, but they actually released, um, they released items that people are searching for and Amazon does not have. Why? Because Amazon is benefiting from more people coming onto their site and staying there. Uh, for everything. So if businesses are needing something and no one's providing it, then they are dealt, they are in a bad position. They end up having to lose customers for that specific reason. So um, the second one that I suggest is retail arbitrage. Only because retail arbitrage is um, is something that you can do and um, you can do in person and you can do online but you can go in with $500, which is what I said earlier. We started with $500 and we downloaded Keepa, which is $15 a month. And um, we actually did inventory lab because we had a retail arbitrage. So arbitrage just means that like you're buying up items. And um, I guess I would say like buying up items and like selling it or 
doing something else with it, like holding it, getting some type of profit from it. So Airbnb arbitrage, like getting rooms, apartments, all that. So you can Airbnb it. That is a form of arbitraging. So with this retail arbitrage, we really hit hard in big lots. And we probably had a lot of losses too. You got to be prepared to test the water. And testing the water sometimes means taking the wrong step, going down, coming back up, going down and coming back up. Look, I was just watching Yellowstone. So bear with me. They were crossing the river. <laughs> but yeah, so... With that information, we used that Keep app. That was that graph that I was showing you guys. And it could kind of tell you how well this item has done over time. If it's seasonal, if Amazon usually comes on the listing and like tanks it, meaning they get so much inventory from these brands that you could not even compete. Some people are... Like, that's their thing. They don't mind going on with Amazon because, you know, as soon as Amazon goes out of stock, they're there like, I got it. I already know how much Amazon is selling for that month. It will tell you. Like, let me show you. The, the software will show you how much a competitor has uh in stock. So there is no guessing. So let me go back to that same example. We're going to keep it real simple. So you guys are seeing my screen is giving a little bit of an overview and it looks like a lot of people are just sending these into Amazon opposed to selling them themselves. So two FBA, zero fulfilled by merchant. So that means, um, yeah, they're sending them all into Amazon. We got a little bit of a, it's kind of even here. Anywho, um, you see this graph that keeps on popping up on the right hand side. Yeah, that's what I mean by uh, Kiba it is a software called Kiba. And it's telling you the cost, volume and the date in which it's selling this certain amount. So with the information, people use that to be like, hey, I can see that when the fall comes, this peaks. Let me buy these items a month out so I can get ahead of it. And that also means that I'm going to hit it at the right season. So um, you got to be really intentional about that. And then um, online arbitrage, you're like doing the same thing, except you're going to send it into Amazon or no online arbitrage. You can you can sell it yourself. Also, like the models are about the same, except the only difference is retail. You're going into a retail store online. You're not going to an online store. You can choose to send it into Amazon and the fees are a little different. Um, or you could sell it yourself. Now, what I was talking about before that I'm going to show you guys is that the software will tell you how much your competitors have in stock so you know how much to buy. So like, for instance, for this one, if I were trying to figure out how much I should buy, I would look at this information, including the BSR, that's the seller rank, and then the sales for... Um, I believe, yeah. So it gives you the sales for a month, you know, um, what is that? Three months and six months. So the sales for the month, like if this was your company and you had the buy box, meaning you had dominion over this particular item, then you could look at, you know, a good amount of sales coming from this listing. 2,146, you know, not half bad. If you ask me, not half bad. But if it's saying that 2,000 sell in the month, then I would go over and look at the competition and be like, okay, how many people are also on the listing and how much do they have? 
So if I go over here, I can actually see that it's not that many people on the listing. And you see like this flashing, that means it's like selling. Anywho, uh, quantity, the, they don't really have that many either, but they're all, they look all pretty solid. Now I can tell from here that um, it looks like there has been an IP claim. Oh, that was like two years ago though. So not have bad item. Um, all those sales and it looks like they may be getting ready to go out of stock anyways. But um, no Amazon competition, any of that. So uh, a little bit of that, I play it safe, conservative. If we're talking about $500, then I would probably like get one or two of these depending on what I actually bought it for. I know these are good when they have like the winner. Um, the winner sale is like two for two for $10 or something like that. Like obviously if you're getting uh, two for $10 or even two for, it's probably like two for $20 or something like that. Even if you're getting two for $20 and you know, you get one for 10, obviously. And on Amazon is selling for $24. I think that's a pretty good return, you know, after fees or whatnot. So the second model I would suggest is retail or online arbitrage. Start out there. Okay. Um, retail or online arbitrage is actually the first model that I would suggest but we're just talking about different forms of e-commerce. So the first one we talked about, lowest liability is drop shipping. It's a lot of vagueness in the market. So you have no contextualization, but you can start out cheap. Okay. And then second is the arbitrage method. That's online or retail. And that's a little easier to break into. Amazon gives you the metrics to understand your market a little better so that you are able to use that information and build your brand off of it. Right. What if you had a candle brand and you were trying to figure out what were the best the best methods of connecting with that particular market? You can analyze that information on Amazon. What if you were a candle brand and you were trying to analyze how often people are buying a private label brand? Now, White Barn is a private label brand, but White, White Barn is under Bath and Body Works. So they have they already have a really big and loyal audience. You don't want to compare your just starting out private label to White Barn. You just like really don't. That's just like Apple Soren just right now at that point. So what you want to do is find a private label on Amazon that's not very well known, but they have a good following and um, a good enough following. I wouldn't say, you know, two out of the barn, but, you know, check out their Instagram and things like that. So then you can start seeing what type of methods they're using to convert from Amazon because Amazon, I think a couple months ago, upgraded. No, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I'm sure they upgraded their marketing features so that you can convert customers from that Amazon site to your website, you can now send out e email marketing messages to those customers for like discounts and to be on your list and things like that. So this is a great place to start because it only takes $40 to start on the platform. And then also it's great market knowledge to be understood, developed, all of that. So that and uh, the next one I am going to talk about is wholesale because though you might only need $500 to start in arbitrage, you're going to need far more money to start with wholesale. And I'm not going to lie about this guys. I do not like the wholesale method. Understand it, upholding the bottom and being really foundational. You're just not going to get that much of a return on wholesale. And you had to put a lot of money up front. And I'm just like, I don't want to hold inventory. I don't want to play, pay a prepper for storage. I don't want to have to go through their catalog. It's just a lot. So I was thinking about doing wholesale and um, developing my course around wholesaling, but I'm not going to do the wholesale method. It's not, 
it's just not something that I've been able to depend on. The people are, I've, um, I have connected with a couple of people, um, with, for their Emerald cues and things like that, but just the churning of the drop shipping, I'm just like, I would rather put all my efforts into that and online arbitrage because wholesale, you got a call for like, I have had to go through three email chains for, for to get items, um, three email chains and then also um then you gotta like call them and check on it and stuff like that so a lot of people uphold their business with wholesale um i might you know do it to uphold the foundational cracks you know just in case uh drop shipping like craps out or something like that but i i have um i have arbitrage so i have items on amazon for that reason like drop shipping is far more risky um, so dropshipping is far more risky, low liability, retail arbitrage is, I wouldn't say it's risky at all. It's, it's a good conservative choice, which is why I suggest you start out there. And then, uh, wholesaling is, I would say it's more risky and you have to use a lot more time to like network relationships and things like that. And, uh, usually you gotta put a couple thousand up. I'm not even going front on you. A couple of thou, a couple of thou wows up. And then um, number four is the private label. So private label, that's my boo, that's my bae. So private label, you're going to get a far better return. So you do have to put that money up. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. But you do have to put your money up for private label. I'm not even going to cap on you. So you do have to put your money up for private label. But um, the way it turns around, maybe it's so beautiful. You're probably going to get like, uh, let's say on your launch, you're probably going to get like 15 percent because you have to put money into your ppc campaign um you have to put money into giveaways and things like that just so people can be like oh let me check this out because you're not going to have any reviews so you kind of got to pay to play so in that budget you should definitely have money to be putting out ads and stuff until you start getting some reviews to come in then it's really up from there because the same private label our same private label is on Walmart, is on Amazon, is on Shopify, on our website, it's on our Instagram, like all of those things come together. And once you start getting that steam, it's up from there. So like I said, um, 15% at first and then starting and launching on Amazon, you're getting market insights, you're getting analysis, and then you are going to work up toward going toward the 30%. So probably like 25 to 30%. But if you put seven grand up for a private label, which we did, and then we did a rocket one for 3000, if you put seven grand up, how much money is that? For 25%. Let me see if my calculations are correct. So if you put seven grand up times 0. 0.3, it's $2,100. So that's one. That's one. Now that's what I'm talking about. So you get about 9,000 back. And then it continues to roll you bring some neighbors, meaning complimentary items. So not uh, when you start getting these private labels, your best bet is going to be to niche. And then not only to niche, but to develop complimentary items. So if you are, let's say, um, let's say you are doing a knife set and that knife set is uh, your private label you got the best knives and you're like doing so well in sales and you're like, I want to do another 
private label. Don't go out and do like a private label dog food or something. No, do something that complements the do something that complements the knives because then you're going to be able to not only have a package with just knives, but you're going to be able to develop a complementary um a complementary item or pal and that's going to add to your uh amazon suggestions as like people that buy this also buy this so if i were to develop a knife set i would most definitely um develop like a knife sheathing set or a knife sharpener or something to that extent because it's like hmm i will need to keep these sharp you know it just makes sense to buy together putting those together game changer um and we call those bundles we bundle it up so if you have salt baby you better have pepper too because you can charge more marketing tip you can charge more on your bundles because psychologically people think that they're saving more money but at the end of the day you're still like spending money. It's kind of like, it's the popcorn example. And they say, um, you know, if you have popcorn and it's like a small popcorn, people are like, okay, I'll get the small popcorn for $5. But if you say, or for an additional dollar, you can get popcorn and some candy. You can be like, yeah, let me get that. Let me get that. When in all actuality, you just just paid extra money. That's that's all we were looking for. It's just, it's just more of a profit. And a uh, private label. Anyways, going to the next one. This is the Mecca Omeka, Mecca Mecca. People go in on these, and uh, I'm not there yet. Like I feel like we needed to build up. So the model that we suggest to people that are just starting in the industry is um, online arbitrage with a prep center because don't want, I, I personally don't want to hold inventory. I have one. I have a model that you don't have to hold inventory. And then um, the next one is private label. So you use the profits from your reselling and you put that into your private label. So what we do, we show you how to start with $500. By the end of 12 months, you have $3,000. You use $500 from that $3,000. You put that into reselling that next year. And then that $2,500, the rest of that $2,500 going into the private label that you wanted to start initially, you just didn't have thousands of dollars and you didn't want to start from zero. You wanted to dabble your toe into the water well you already doubled a whole year you got it you're confident now you're knocking it out the park so use that twenty five hundred dollars to start your rocket launch with small and light with a small and light item and go from there but this is the mecca oh mecca boy i'm telling you number five is a passion product Number five is a passion product. And these passion products, girl. These passion products are not cheap. No, 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 no. And that's another reason why I was like, mm. so number one, drop shipping. Really, you have your listings. And let's say you only have a thousand dollars or you have a couple hundred dollars and people buy the items you send them the items you run out of money pause your store get the profits do it over again in the store um online arbitrage you have a certain amount of money you buy all the money up you buy all the items up front you don't have to wait till anyone purchases it you just look at the market analyze it buy the products throw them out there take four to six weeks come back redo it Wholesale, wholesale, the, the strategy with wholesale is just like being one of their exclusive sales, sales people with the item that does really well. 
So it's really relationship based. Um, so that has really, it really depends. Um, private label is like uh, you develop a good um, brand authority, you develop a good audience behind you, community, all of that. You can start with, um, oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. You can start with um, wholesale. You could probably start with um, a couple thousand. Like nobody's going to do work with you if it's a couple hundred, honestly. But private label, you can do small and light. And that budget is really between two and four thousand. And then um, for private label, if you're going to go all out, you're probably looking at minimum of 7,000 to like 12,000 and um, launching from there. But your private label, like, um, but your passion product, your passion product is going to be based on something that you are obviously like really passionate about. That's the whole thing about it. And this is really a modern take on inventory, like, inventory this is a really modern take on inventions inventing things and um god that just reminds me of that one commercial y'all know that one commercial that you would see all the time when you were at your house and it was like um it was a caveman and the caveman would be like beating on that wheel yeah like that um it is from scratch. Everything is from scratch. So you, you, you'll be going through the process and we are also going to be going through the process this year because our model is, um, or what we help others do because we've done it before is start with reselling, get into private label, and then your passion product. So use the profits from your private label to fuel your passion product. But you are doing everything from the prototype to the research to the market demand to like you probably need a whole marketing agency. You need like all of these things to launch. And I don't foresee it being cheaper than 10 grand. I don't. And everybody don't have 10 grand. So even for you to get started, you got you got to look at the fact that you can have like private label. You have a month for research you have like a month for analysis you have a month for launching and then um in the small and light you'll probably be launched three to four months but with your passion product it's going to take a little longer but we were talking about the percent that you get back like obviously you have more of a you have more of an ability to really really customize you have more of an ability to really really um get more profit from your passion product because you just put more money you put more you put more seasoning on things that you are passionate about so if you are just like this protein buff and you i'm not even gonna start on protein because first of all i tried amino acid Oh my God, I thought, and this was like at the beginning of COVID, I was like working at Amazon and I took amino because I was like, I need to be up. It was the worst thing ever to my stomach, to my stomach lining or whatever. But, um, I literally stay crawled up into a ball the entire time. And it was so frustrating because at the beginning of COVID, anybody that got sick, they were like, you got COVID. No, I drank too much of the amino stuff. And it was like these freaking BCAA chains wouldn't get out of my system. Like they were in there for a month. But the good thing is um, teacher gurus were like teaching from home or whatever. So I didn't like necessarily lose my job, but I, I was dealing with a lot at that time. Anywho, on from that, um, if you are a buff and you want to do protein, but you realize that the protein that you usually take is like too chalky or, um, they don't have any 
oat versions, like oat milk versions of the protein or something like that. And you have like one distinguishing feature that is really like specific to you and you buy into it. That's called a passion product. And really the niche items really work because if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one and you're really not that unique. So if there's something that you're dealing with, then nine times out of 10, somebody else in this world on this earth has also dealt with the same thing. So don't think that you're just like out here um, by yourself, but you know, people with allergies, things like that, they get into that premium organic niche girl. Them profits are outstanding. I resold a couple of items that were organic and I was looking for everything organic after that, you know, um, it's definitely a good niche to be in, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. I've been talking for a cool minute. I hope you guys got something really good from it. But again, my name is Netta. I am the host of the Beyond E-Commerce podcast. Everything e-commerce. We talk about everything e-commerce. But what I really aspire to do and I'm going to do and I am doing is showing you low liability ways to start in e-commerce. Know a little bit of the terminology. Understand the market and start. So, um, the, the first and cheapest drop shipping second and low liability is online arbitrage. Third is wholesale. You spend a little more money, but it's not as much money. Um, private label. Now we're getting up in more money five, and that's going to be your passion product. That's about 10 grand. That's about 10 grand. Run me that money, baby. All right. Now. I have enjoyed talking with you guys. I am hoping to get some feedback, some questions, anything of that sort. I'm going to be bringing you more market analytics and things of that sort. So we can come out and we could be really clear about how we're going to launch these brands and create successful private labels that are not just sitting on Shopify waiting on randomized to see them. All right, guys, this has been another episode Hello and welcome to the Who We Become podcast, a space where we showcase product and service-based businesses, share the owner's journey, and provide visual experiences for all to enjoy. 